evening if you are in Europe or elsewhere. Good day, good morning, uh, whatever it might be. It may be, uh, guys, there was an international break, um, but we still do the live stream every week on Thursday. And now we have to think about Ajax again, or maybe we're thinking about Ajax still during the international break. We'll find out soon. Twente on Sunday, Marseille next week on Thursday, Europa League, and then Feyenoord, guys. These are really nice games we have. Um, we're going to talk about Stang and Ajax, and especially how can we improve compared to what we saw at Fortuna and also the last game at, uh, in Amsterdam against Rude Goritz. With me today to talk about Stang and Ajax, of course, Opimento, Luke, and Pelle. It's been a while, but we're happy to have you. <laughs> um, uh, guys, just quickly, right? I was talking about the international break. What do you guys feel about the international break in general? Do you guys think in this particular case, was it a good thing for Stang to have like a reset a little bit to think about how to get things going in the upcoming games? Or do you think, no, it's better to have that rhythm like game in, game out, especially at the start? What do you guys think about that? Luke, what do you think? Um, I think that in Stein's case, it wasn't effective. It, it, there was no rhythm anyway. There's no momentum to like carry on. So it was like, I mean, I mean, it allowed time for him to train. Uh, I guess have more training sessions with those that didn't go away. But, you know, it didn't do much for a team that had no momentum in any way. Uh, Pele, what do you feel about uh, the international break, this one that we just had? Is it a good thing or maybe not a good thing in your opinion? You, you really want to ask that to a Swedish person at this point in time. I mean, it was a disappointment, but it's just, you know, it gave me the disappointment needed to go into the, go back to Ajax. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I've just gotten used to it at this point. So, yeah, I, I learned to be disappointed and I will probably apply that now in the rest of the season as well. <laughs> so, just a steady, steady stream of disappointment. No, but um, I think, it's, to be serious though, I do believe that, as Luke said previously, I don't think it's going to bump that much, really. I mean, previously it's been, you know, we've been riding high and then it's interrupted us while we're doing good. Uh, at this point, uh, honestly, it might just have brought some things into, the, into perspective. I hope that Stein got things together during the break. Might not have gotten all the players he wanted to train with, but, you know, at least he might have gotten his head in the game. I pray that he did. But we'll probably, yeah, we'll see during the weekend, won't we? Yeah, the only disadvantage uh, is that he also missed out a lot of players that had to go on international duty. So it's not like he had the whole group. So everything is a bit of a reset for him today with a full group. And he has three days to train before the game uh, on Sunday. Puppy, what about you? Do you think it's a good thing or do you think uh, maybe it was best to just continue with the same group? Um... Well, actually, I think for Stein it's better. For me, it was uh, actually nerve wracking because I still my my barrel isn't filled yet with Ajax. You know, we haven't seen the Ajax yet. We haven't seen the beautiful play yet. So for me, I feel still empty in that uh, aspect. And um, also, we haven't seen the full potential of the squad yet. So I'm full of anticipation and hope, and I just wanted the international break to be over. Um, because I don't know this team as well as my previous teams. Uh, back in the day, it was, okay, they go to international, Blake, we relax a bit, then we know our team comes back and, and we have a decent team. But now, we don't even know the state of our coach, the level he's at. We, we, we don't know the level that of the play of all the new players that came in, to be honest. Uh, there are still some doubts. So yeah. a lot of things uh, that um, are not fun for a fan when you have an international break. Yeah, all right. If that's the way you feel about it, that's fine. Uh, okay. Um, I can understand why you're saying that, by the way, and I agree with you uh, to a certain extent. Look, uh, before we start talking about um, what we should do, right, what we think we should do or Stan should do and how can we improve compared to the last two games we saw, having more of a team, you know, gelling more, etc. Let me just take a moment to let people know that we are doing a free shirt, free IX kit giveaway challenge. So I will explain right now how you can participate and we will, after the live show ends, we will also uh, put it in the comment and pin the comment so people can drop their uh, predictions as well. Um, for people to be eligible very quickly, you have to be a subscriber or subscribe to our channel. Like this video, very important, like this video. 
And after the live chat, we would like to know in the comment section from you two things. So we were playing against Twente on Sunday. We will play Marseille on Thursday for the Europa League. And we will play Feyenoord at home next week as well. So we want to know from those three games, first, first thing we want to know, how many points will we get from those three uh, games? And the second thing we want to know as well is how many goals will we score? And we added that last one because we didn't score in the last two games. So that was very pretty. So we want to know if that can be better. So if you guys be a bit positive, maybe we can give it a little bit to Ajax and Stan as well along the way, right? So again, guys, to participate very quickly, uh, subscribe, like, and make sure after the live show, so not in the live talk, but in the comment section of this video, um, how many points against Twente, Marseille, Feyenoord combined? How many goals combined? That's it. And you guys, of course, can participate as well after the live show if you guys want as well. No problem. Um, I I qualified when you said that we were supposed to be positive with the goals. So no, I, I think I'm just <laughs> off there. So yeah. Uh, no, no, you can, you can, you can say whatever you want. That's fine. Um, so the winner will uh, will have the right to choose the the kit that he wants, the first, the second, or the third kit. So um, good luck to everyone who wants to who wants to join, and let's hope for the best. Okay. Let's go. Let's get to the to the main topic right now. Um, okay, we're playing Twente on Sunday, guys, and like I said, we haven't been playing very good prior to the international break. I asked you guys prior to the to the show. Can you guys think of what should Stang pick up or change compared to what he has been doing in recent games, so we can start getting points, playing better. Uh, getting the team to gel a little bit more, et cetera, et cetera. Let me give it to Luke for, uh, first. For me, it's, it's quite difficult because there's not a lot to judge on. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot to judge on. It's like a 50-50 thing, right? So the team need to press more, for one. Uh, but I say that because I know we're all accustomed to Ajax and the big pressing, you know, chasing the ball, winning it. He needs to stick to that, but also... That's modern football now as well. You need to be able to put pressure on your opponent as soon as they're able to play out and go and sometimes score that scrappy goal that you win the ball high and, and, you, and you slot it away. It's the way football is. Um, other than that, he needs to stick to his guns, in my opinion. If he wants, if he was successful at Sparta for playing wide overloads with fullbacks overlapping wingers and trying to draw players out of position, then stick to that because every manager has their own philosophy and their own way of doing it. It's down to the technical director or the technical or the or the head of the the club or like like what position Sven is to hire that manager, you know, to match the club's philosophy. Yeah, right. So Stein may have been the wrong. Uh, pick for the club in terms of, for example, if you look at Man City and everything they've done with Pep, if they went and hired Mourinho, it's like completely the opposite of what they what they what they've worked on. And Ajax for so long have obviously done the thing the Ajax way. And if to hire someone like Stein is obviously like the complete opposite, if you would. But now he's here, he just needs to stick to his guns and always and stick to it right until the end that he leaves. Because unfortunately, he's the manager of our club, and we have to we have to support it, don't we? So. Does this also mean that if he wants to change a formation, which is not, let's say, Ajax formation that we're used to, he should stick to it in European as well? At, at the moment, you need results. You need to work with what you have. And whether or not he wanted Donny van der Beek and whether or not he wanted all these players that Sven didn't, you have the tools. If you're a good manager and you got Sparta to sixth, do something, man, right? Um, but he need, he needs there's a reason they picked attacking fullbacks and things like that and he obviously wants to do wide overloads in my opinion have the ten make runs in behind when the gap opens up and things like that so we just have to wait for it to gel but he definitely needs to have the team press more um, and 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 stick and stick to his guns and not be afraid to drop a specific player if they're not playing you know I don't I don't mean Bergwijn specifically but I mean you know if Van der Bomen's not playing well fine okay the next player can can, can have his opportunity you know. Okay, Pele. What about you? What, what's your what's your advice? What would you want to see Stan do in the next couple of games? I mean, it's funny because I remember that we were having it. Uh, one of the times I was on not too long ago, we were talking about what Schroeder should have done. So I think I feel like I'm a canary in the coal mine on this one. 
Uh, let's hope this turns out b better, obviously. No, but I completely agree with Luke, first of all, the fact that you actually need to actually, because that's one of the major issues we have, have right now, because we're going to talk about the coach. I don't know if I speak only for myself, but I do believe I speak for most, in that I haven't really seen the characteristic of this coach. You haven't really seen the, what you call it, the hand of Stein, so to speak. You haven't really seen exactly what he contributes when it comes to different tactics or what he wants to, the player on the pitch to do. Because right now everyone's playing, you know, it just look, looks like everyone's headless chickens running around, not really, there are no dynamics in between. So if, so to be realistic, I would do completely agree the fact that if you look at the squad we have right now and you see that it is a better way to do things, to, for example, if you want to play out for the back, if you want to change the formation, if you want to play, you know, uh, if you want to play a 2-5-3 or whatever, if you do believe that that's in the short term going to get you results, then you should probably do that to begin with. Uh, in the long term, I don't think that's sustainable and I especially not going to gel well with fans. So I do believe that you need to adapt that, to that reality eventually. But looking at the previous results, we can't really be in a position in which we want to be in a couple of months because otherwise he's going to be sacked in a couple of weeks. So not That might be up too ob optimistic, but he needs to get results. And if the, he's going to start off doing that in the beginning, then come on, yeah, do it in a way that you feel comfortable with. At least show us what your your position as a coach will be. What will you do? And also, another side note, stop stop complaining in the press conferences. Please be a leader. Just take responsibility. If something goes wrong, even if you feel, even if you're mad at someone else, just be a lead, leader in that regard because we have lost a lot of those characteristics in the, in the window as well. So that's probably my two cents. Yeah, you want him to, to sing a different song going forward, basically. Yeah, no, yeah, no, exactly. Because I don't want to, I don't want to say to be being all negative and being all where doom and gloom. That's not really what I want to do. Uh, but yeah, as long as things are heading the trajectory which they are, then I do believe that we need some adjustments because obviously it hasn't been working out. And yeah, if that is, if that requires some changes in a way that makes him comfortable in the way he lines up the place, then. I'm, I mean, do it. I won't be happy about that in the beginning, but you know, I'm, I'll be darn more happier than I will if we continue losing week in, week and and week out and leave, lose points. So, yeah, uh, people already. I don't know. It's funny though because look, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, and I don't remember an Ajax coach. It wasn't even like this with Scherder. Like an Ajax coach, after a few weeks, people already like, yeah, you know, we're trying to be positive, but. Nobody is really, like, deep down, there's not many people thinking this will end well. And I haven't seen this before, to be honest. Uh, I don't know how you guys think about it, but look, like, people already in the chat saying, can we get Van Gaal in already? You know, these kind of, <laughs> these kind of things. Um, no, what, that, what that's too early for me. Yeah, it's, okay. Too early for you, Papimento. I wanted to ask you, um, do you have anything to add to what Luke said or Pella said? Do you agree with them? Well, I do want to react to the comments that want a different coach. I would say give him the chance because he didn't have a full team yet. Yes, um, maybe he's lacking in the in the tactic side of things, but let's judge him on the coming games and not what he already performed because now he has a full squad. And now we can really start to judge him and see if there's any kind of structure and, and, and tactic that he wants to uh, implement in this team. Um, but look, Juan... For me, results very important, but I also want to see growth within the team. I want to see triangles. I want to see, uh, you know, one coming in, one moving away. You know, the 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 rhythm, the the gelling, the etc. And last time, you know, he he had a whole preseason with a couple of guys, and still he chose to put five new guys in. I uh, I understand the quality is there, but that's a lot of change for just one game. I think also we didn't have Berghaus and Berkwein back then. So I think those are huge for us coming coming games. You're talking about Fortuna uh, specifically as your benchmark. Yeah. For Tuna. As, okay. as my benchmark, as what happened in that in that game mm -hmm. uh, and what we were lacking. Uh, a little bit of firepower from, from Bergwijn, Berghuis with his crisp passing. I think we lack that a lot. Um, but I think now it's the time for Stein to prove himself. And look, we might be negative, but if he doesn't get any points in the coming three games, I'm 100% sure he, he's not going to still be a coach at Ajax. So the result is definitely going to count, but we also want to see progression in the gameplay and not just a scrappy win, 0-1, and we played bad and one shot or two shots. But last time, also against Fortuna, 
we weren't creating any shots. Any any attacking prowess wasn't there. It was all individuality, but not a team effort. So I want to see that as well in the coming games. And it's all up to uh, Stein. And we blame Stein, but I'm when I say Stein, I'm also talking about Maduro because he should be the tactical brain behind the Stein uh, uh, coaching. So can I just can I just um, say something with the Fortuna game? The problem that I saw was that um, obviously it was very predictable, right? So you you have Forbes on a left wing. He's a left footed player. He's going to stay wide. So you have a Vila stay back because what's the point of having an overlap of a wide like a really wide player? You're going to want someone to come inside and an overlap, which I think when Bergvine comes in and then you have Forbes on the right or whatever he's going to choose, he's going to have people that are going to come inside. So it means so so. And Gai or Venture, whoever comes in at right back, are going to do overlap both sides. So it adds a bit of unpredictability with it. But I look, think with Fortuna, it was think, very square. Do you think uh, you can play with the guy and Sosa? That's one. And second, if even if Wrench plays, last time he had so much space on that right uh, wing position and he didn't even move, he didn't even use his space well. Yeah, Wrench so is awful. What is our yeah. expectation of him doing it well in this game? That's my question. Well, yeah, the- depends also, we're talking about Fortuna, but the Fortuna, as you already talked or touched upon, uh, we basically, Stan came up with a different uh, style of play, right? He wanted basically a wrench to be more a wing back than a right back. And he had to run into the open space on the right wing position. But you can see he was struggling because he didn't have the tactical awareness to play that position. Because he never played that position before. But it made sense, though, did it not? Because you have a wide player on the left, so you have a, a player behind sitting more defensive rather than giving well, it, width, right? It, I'm tactically, sorry, Luke, it but it only it, tactically it makes sense, but you do have to right. have the players to no, play absolutely. that tactic. Yeah, so, absolutely. Which is why I feel like... What game did he see from Wrench that he was capable of running in those spaces? I, I, I don't think it was a selection of whether Wrench or not could do it. I think it worked because you had... Um, Burkhaus coming from the right, or whoever the sorry, not Burkhaus, who um who's the new player that came? Uh Mika. Was it was Mika, it, Mika Tauts. Tauts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot his name. He was coming inside and rotating with Hilson. No, so there was like a, a whole rotation where someone was coming inside, which meant there was space to overlap. On the other side, there was no one coming inside. But when Bergvine comes in, there's gonna be space for an overlap on both sides, right? Or you could choose the left side over the right side if you really wanted to. But tactically, the reason why I think he goes for wrench is just because it worked for the left foot or, or someone to come inside and Forbes to stay left because everyone was saying, oh, he's a left winger. You keep him on the left. Let him do it. Put him on the right. He's left footed. Okay, let me right? ask you, yeah, let me ask you a question. You're you're an aspiring um, coach, of course. <laughs> you always laugh, but I'm serious. You're doing your license. People know about that. So as a coach, right, you have so many new players and in the preseason, like Papimento already said, you are basically trying a certain formation, tactics, etc., with the players that you have. Now, all of a sudden, you have Fortuna Sitar and you switch everything around, almost everything around, and you put five players in, and you also change the tactic a little bit because we didn't play with a wing back in the preseason. Would you have done that? It's difficult to say because no one knows what they're working on behind the scenes, right? But if you take away from that, if you take that way and you go from match to match purely, uh, I wouldn't have done it because, I, like Papi said, Papi Mentor said, there's, there's too many changes, too many at once, right? Uh, it's, it's a big culture change for a lot of players. You know, it's a coach change for for the manager as well. He's gone from Sparta to Ajax. There's a lot of new things going on, and there's loads of moving parts and things like that. So for me, it wouldn't, it, it didn't work. But you can see why he's done it because the pressure was on him, and everyone was calling for, oh, these new players are start, get them in. We don't want to see, you know, Wrench or we, you know, we don't want to see Saladin or Vinal or whoever. They wanted these in, so it was either you do it, and fans are happy to an extent because they see the starting lineup and they're like, wow. Yeah, or you don't, and everyone's like, "Well, why buy them and not play them?" Right? So it was lose lose for him because he didn't do anything prior to to win anyone over yet, you know. So he only added pressure himself. So he took a gamble and it didn't pay off. These things happen in football, right? You take you take gambles when you buy players. You take gambles when 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 you sell them and when you pick certain, certain formations. Ten Hag well, took plenty of gambles, the, didn't he? The only thing I would say different to that is why would you play your players that haven't trained with the team yet? Because he took a gamble. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's a huge gamble. And, and one, after, moment. At the press... one moment, one moment, guys. Papimento, your 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 sound should be a bit higher. I think you're a bit too soft. I don't know if you guys better. Are... Better I'm sorry now. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. 
No, no, no. It, it's okay. I, I just wanted to say, so you choose, you take a gamble, and then you complain about the gamble in the press conference? I don't understand. So he didn't know, because he said, I don't know if their quality is good enough, but he did play them. So why would you play them if you don't know about the quality? No, and 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 but if you look, I'm talking tactically with him. Whatever he's got going on in his head, I don't know. I don't agree with him complaining. I don't agree with him making a decision and then complaining. But tactically, it sh- it made sense against Fortuna. It should have made sense with decisions he made, with the quality that he put on the field. But obviously, it was a gamble that didn't pay off. You yeah. know. So going forward, we can. I think we can see a lot more unpredictability. Now he's had some training sessions. He's got Sosa to come in, who's who I've heard is a really attacking um, left back. Guy you could play as attacking right back. I think Stein really loves Reg for some reason, so I think he'll start him anyway. Just it's a weird thing, but you know he has all these players that can t- that move in parts. But at Fortuna, it was very stiff, very just straight, and it, and it's predictable, yeah. right? So it kind of comes back to one of those things because I'm pretty sure this has been discussed every week and week. Uh, uh, the, the type of discussion, how much that is to do with the fact that because of the first three, four games, five games, I'm, I, I don't even know everything gels together at this point in time. Not in a positive way, neither. Uh, much of what I've seen has been very much the fact that they kind of get the impression that we're still in the preseason, you know, that they're kind of, you know, screwing around, what's, what's the saying, fuck around and find out type of mentality of throwing things at the wall to see what sticks. And due to the fact that we got most of this play so so late. So if I'm going to play de- devil's advocate in that situation, I do believe that Mislintat might have been, you know, to blame for some some of that Absolutely. But how, how can you blame him? I think that was the, uh, the board not with, direction. Not with, not with the players in mind, but due to the fact that you kind of had the preseason to try to get things to gel. And in this, this situation, I mean, it's obviously first and foremost on the role of Stein. He had that opportunity to try to, you know, get get the place which he had because you don't always get the place which you need, but you have to do the most of it, right? And I, don't, I do believe that they had enough depth to at least beat I mean, yeah, so yeah, I know exactly, and Fortuna, so yeah, but yeah, but at the same time, yeah, so I think that I don't know how much of these last games I I don't feel comfortable judging too much as of yet, due to the fact that that's why I'm not entirely gonna say that I want him out, due to the fact that I believe that once we have those quality players and that we actually have gelled better as a team, I do believe that that hand might show more. Uh, but the question is, unless that is going to show now against Twente, I'm not certain that he's going to have that much more longer. Of an hold, hold that thought, uh, Pelle, because I want to throw uh, two comments in this discussion. I want everybody to react, but Pelle, you can go first. First, uh, we have a comment from Remy. Um, he's saying, from now on, we can hope to see incremental improvements. Full squad needs to play together a lot. Actual games. Uh, that's one. And Christian is saying uh, earlier to what Papimento was saying, and we were discussing as well, Guys, is three days enough for players to get to know each other? Um, no, but, but to get to a form those are not going to be. Wait, so which players are we talking about? Because Berach has ones. been there, Berach has, has been there, Broby has been there, Wrench has been there. It's it's not the new, only the new ones that are the problem. It's also the players that have been there, and they had the whole preseason, and they're not yeah. showing the level that we need. So yeah, but Papi. Yeah. I mean, that's not how it works in a team sport, right? If if a few in the team don't don't function, it will it will it will also affect your game. That's how it works. Oh yeah, I understand that, Juan. But I do expect more from Wrench now, going in his what second, third you, season now. Do you really, or are you yeah. hoping more from Wrench now? I, no, I do expect I, more from Wrench. I just I just think that they don't realize, and I'm not talking about only him, but now he's the example. I just don't understand that he doesn't understand that he's getting extra chances. Chances in a strong Ajax team he would have never had. And still he's not willing enough to improve his game to show everyone that he is an Ajax starter. Maybe we have to come to the realization. I'm just throwing it out there. It's a question, maybe a statement at the same time, that maybe that's his level. Do we really expect him to be a much better player? No. That's the thing. I mean, that's the thing, right? Because it's been a discussion for a long time. He, if he is anything else than a, a an average, you know, a, a Eredivisie player, right back, and I mean, everyone can basically see at this point in time that he, I don't, I, I can't remember he's he's he ever shown like exceptional qualities. No, I did. His first season at uh, under Ten Hag, he played some excellent games. I remember him coming in the box and scoring. 
yeah. I remember but those games from uh, Wrench, but it's... So, yeah. I, no, the, the, it's... The, the, the problem is, for me, is like, if now in football, you have to be good at everything. To be a top, top class player, you have to be able to do everything. I can't name three things that Wrench does well now. Yeah? He's, he, he's just not... He's one of those players that doesn't have um, the intelligence to be able to make quick decisions. There, there are times where I've seen him run with the ball when he can play a pass and he just tries to run. And it's like, what are you doing? Right? So, and, and now you've brought a, a forward thinking right back from what I've seen on compilations in Gaye, who likes to play forward passes, who likes to get crosses in the box when he played uh, at Viborg. You know, that's competition for him now. And I, I don't think Wrench, Wrench will be able to compete. I just think he will, he will lose his confidence and then it will go lower and then he'll just, he'll just leave. Okay. He'll probably, uh, go, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, I just said the fact that I agree with Luke that I do believe okay. that it might be Wrench's last season with us due to the fact that I don't think we're going to, unless he pulls some very, you know, unless he pulls something out of his hat like straight away. But well, I, the thing I, is, I hope not because I. Sorry, go I on, wasn't puppy. blaming Wrench. No, I, I wasn't blaming Wrench. I just wanted to say that he's getting extra chances because we are in a rebuilt uh, team. Yeah. And he, he needs to understand this and do his utmost to raise his level because this level isn't enough. And it has been yeah, like this for multiple seasons, not just this season. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, agreed. Yeah, okay. Uh, Luke, did you want to finish uh, what you were saying? Yeah, sorry. About about um, the whole getting players um, for preseason and stuff that Pelle was talking about earlier. There are some things you can't help because he obviously needed to sell players first before he could buy Pre-seasons already started, okay? And negotiations don't happen in just one day. You have to negotiate. You have to... I don't just go and throw 30 mil for Juan for We Talk channel, yeah? You have to negotiate. You bring it down to... You offer... You lowball, and then you you meet in the middle, and then, you you know, you do all these things. And then you also have to go for the, the, the paperwork and stuff. So we probably could have got Sutalo three weeks earlier, potentially, if, you know, if they didn't want to keep him for their qualifiers and things like that, if we threw 30 million, Rather than you know low ball in there eighteen twenty things like that, so these things happened and and with the budget that we're on, considering we don't have Champions League football, we have to be careful with these signings. And okay, I know we can say seventeen million for Forbes is huge and it is absolutely huge. It's a big gamble, you know. But you know we have to be careful with with every million that we have essentially. And if if they think the Forbes is worth seventeen million, for example, then you know hopefully they can they can prove that he is. But there's a reason why these players didn't come in straight away. You know, so then Stein then has to have a preseason with the plays he may not want, and then he gets the plays later on. So, you know, these players are going to need to play games together, like that comment said, uh, more games with each other to then gel. But it's not going to happen in, in, in a few weeks. I don't know if it will happen by Twente. I don't know if it will happen by Feyenoord. I doubt it. Well, if if, okay. if he is the overperformer, Sven says, he should be able to do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's uh, let's park it here a little bit. Um, I want to go over a few comments, and I want to I want to stay in this lane. I want to still talk a little bit more about this. Um, and by the way, you're saying 17 million, Luke. I believe it was. I don't know if it's, if you're pounds. You're talking about pounds. Uh, yes. Yeah, pounds, ah, okay. I think. Yeah. I think yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. people don't get confused. Okay. Fine. Oh, that's sorry. See, what is it in euro? No, no, that's fine. We don't we don't have pounds here, man. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is it in euro? Was it like 19, 20? Yeah, 19, including. Uh, uh, the ads or add-ons oh, okay. it was 14 okay. i believe without but okay, okay. um let me go through the comments i'll go through them in one go so we don't forget anyone and then we'll we'll continue with the, with the discussion <laughs> that's okay um let me go quickly so here um millennial say standing time time for what we do not know what to expect from the guy uh there's a saying a bad dancer's balls <laughs> get in the way all right. Wait, wait, wait. I've never heard of that. Can I, can I, just I, didn't, that one? I didn't hear of it either. I didn't hear from it either. Um, Remis, yeah. Um, Ziggy's asking you, Luke, just hold it. No, don't answer yet. Luke, where would you position Berghuis' upcoming game? And who would you play on the right? So rem- rem- remind me of asking you this question in a bit as well. Remy is saying, uh, or answering actually, I think. Uh, I can see Berghardt fit well with Guy, that Stephen can go inside and have um, Anton move in in the space if he leaves that for him. I've seen a couple of reasonable passes from Guy in the few minutes that he played um, you know, against Fortuna. Um, speciality, he's good with crossing and stuff like that. Yeah, you can look at the weird talk saying, I did a while ago, yeah. Progressive was saying, it doesn't seem to me that the team was training with, the, with this formation before. I wouldn't let my team play without any routines. We all see why against Fortuna. But a lot of things didn't went well, didn't go well for us, basically. Yeah, 
that's true. Um, yeah, and also nickname is saying Stan also gave the squad days off uh, this international break. That's true because there was also an interview with Akpom, yeah, and he went to the UK to see his family again, which he said. So yeah, that's true, which is fine, by the way. <clears throat> um, let me see what else do we have. Here we go. Thomas is saying, I think suggesting Wrench is not willing to work harder is harsh. We don't know that. He might just not have it in him. Yeah. Uh, I don't so, think anyone's, I think that was just misunderstood. No one, I don't think anyone said he would have worked hard. No, I don't think I mean, no, I just meant to say or, that. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean it. But he's also yeah. saying, please bear in mind that Sanchez got a lot of uh, minutes as well last season, which is true. Yeah, but Sanchez left and Wrench is still there. Yeah. Um, okay, um, and then here as well, Melenio said, guys, let's be honest here, uh, Tadis was, was an average player, uh, Ziyech was an average player, Promes was average, Van der Beek was an average player, Anthony's an average player, but the coach made it work. Ooh. I mean, that's uh, controversial. I, I think when you talk Island. about, your averages are different than mine averages. Yeah. <laughs> Great. But can, we, but can we agree to his statement, not so much the average part, but that the coach makes a player or a team function and become better. I mean, yeah, I think I believe that a coach can make average players perform when they're uh -huh. in a team with top players that are able to consistently perform. Other players make other players better. De Bruyne makes everyone better at Man City. Haaland makes everyone better. Right? I can get twenty assists by crossing the ball to Haaland because I know he'll finish. But you put you put me up front, for example, and let Papi Meno assist me. I'm not going to score nothing, for example. So then he, he looks better. He looks worse. Right? Yeah. So. You know, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, you know. I mean, that's one been one of the uh, like big problems when it comes to trying to criticize the players that we have right now. For example, with uh, with George or Mike, what how we want to call it. For example, they said that he had a horrible game last uh, for Fortuna, and it wasn't great. However, what you're gonna do in that position when you're playing up front and you basically have no midfield to connect you with the to, to connect you with the goal. So, I mean. It is has to do a, lot, do a lot with both the coaching, but also you know the Dynamo and the rest of the team there. So yeah. Okay, be... but wait, wait. Tadic, Tadic was dominating the Eredivisie before he went to Southampton, mm. and maybe in Southampton it didn't look like much. But I'm totally convinced that a player can benefit from certain play style of certain teams, and Southampton wasn't just suited for him, and Ajax was. But you cannot say that Tadic is an average player. You cannot say that Ziyech is an average player. I'm sorry. Those have specialities that not a lot of players have. So you, you can put them as good players, at least. Okay, let me finish the comments, guys, uh, before we uh, come back to the, to the discussion that we had. Um, I'm just throwing it out there. You guys have to help me with the comments if we also touch upon that in a bit. Um, Ziggy is saying, guys, listen, Divine is only 20. Tough start of the season. I still think he will become of what we expect from him. So Ziggy is still positive. Uh, we have uh, Team Parker saying, uh, guys, there's so much player turnover. I worry more about the loss of the IX identity. It's a good point. Uh, it's also a totally different topic, but maybe we can take it in uh, the discussion as well. Uh, Remy is asking, uh, what about the season under Boss then? Uh, are, you, are you asking this to us, Remy? Let us know what you mean by that. I don't fully understand this question, to be honest. Um, About average players, I think. Okay. But we still had we still had Ziyech, but we had Amin Yunus, we had uh, Traore, and we had Dolberg. We had Klaas on the midfield, I think. Mm -hmm. It wasn't such sure a... It wasn't... It was a decent... But they were average. Most of them were still average at that time. Okay. I think Bus did a lot good that season. Okay, um, Jesper is saying, uh, can we play Mansferk and Tahirovic together at the midfield? Hold that. That's a hold very that. different midfield. Yeah, hold that, guys, please, because I really need to finish these comments. Um, let's see. Nickname, uh, I'm sorry, I just... Nickname is saying, Wrench played his best games actually on the inverted left back position. Agreed? That's true. That's true. Funny enough, that's true. Um uh, Kans is also alluding to the Licht uh, during the boss era. That's true. Um, okay, I think those are the comments for now. Yeah, those are the comments uh, for now. Uh, guys, the, coming back to the topic that we parked for a bit, uh, I want to touch a bit about 
you know, it's hard, right? Because the gelling part, how much time do we give Stan? Uh, Papimento, you said at the start of the video, I don't want only scrappy wins. I don't want bad football. Um, and if we get zero points at the same time, you said he, you know, he really needs to, uh, yeah, be wary of his position, you know, or be afraid of his position. So realistically, guys, going into Twente, going into Marseille, going into Feyenoord, all these games, and let's be honest, there's not much training sessions in between either. It's more prepping, making sure the players are ready, but there's not a lot of time for him to really do what he wants to do. So how realistic should we be? What can we really, really expect? How much time should we give Stan to see the improvement that we want to see? Pelle, you can take it first. I mean, it really depends, doesn't it? I mean, there's a multiple vari variables you have to take into account in that regard. I'm not. I'm going to try to just glance over them, but it's basically the fact that, well, if you start seeing some, you know, consistency both in his like what you want to accomplish, and you actually st start seeing a a vi uh, vision, then I do believe that he might get a little longer. If also, you know, just because you have to give him some time there as well. But if it's all, it's, if it only continues to being very much ragtag, throw, see what happens then I don't believe that you're going to give him that much time. But at the same time, we also have to remember that Eric Den Hag had, like, had not the best start either. And I mean, he also had like, to, to, took about six months or so to go come into it, really, to come, in, <clears throat> come into his own. So we were, we were, yeah, we were, I'm not saying, we I'm not we saying that... We were, yeah, we were inconsistent when Den Haag came in. So we yeah. had a little bit of fluctuations in our results. Yeah. That's true, yeah. I know, uh, just to be honest, yeah, as well, but uh, there's some things that I do believe that needs to uh, needs to change, and that's what I think is going to give him long, longevity or not. Uh, and one of those, for example, is stop going out fighting, you know, like fighting Miss in the in the presses. Uh, and one of the one of the various balls I would say there as well is basically the fact if there's a deter deteriorating relationship between the two, then I do not believe that he, that I don't think that's going to be healthy for the club in the long term if he stays. That's That's about it as well. So it's tactics and also, you know, the way you carry yourself with the rest of the club. So but I yeah. would say every, it's, in that case, I would say every, everything from between, you know, half a season to one season, depending if you can. If we can scrap, you know, a second place this year, I still think we get a Champions League place from now on due to the fact that we went, the uh, Redivisie went past the uh, Portugal League, didn't it? I think we get no, two. No, that will not be, that will not be um, eligible for this season or next season. Okay. So, so okay this I season, yes, this season top two spot immediate. Um, you know, we can we can go immediately to the group phase, and if we become third, we have to play playoffs. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay, I understand. Yeah. I thought both two uh, the two uh, directions. And I think we should also be be very. I mean, that's going to be a different topic, but the Europa League starts next week. If we if we get third place, we might also go to the Conference League. Just for your information. You know? oh, that's, it's uh, kind of yeah. gloomy. No, I'm just saying it's a possibility. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying that's also something that can happen this season. Uh, okay. Let's um, jump to third place. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, all right, um, Luke. What about you, man? Look, um, let me ask you a question just to make it a bit more uh, juicier. You know, maybe. Let's say you see you, you see you see um, Stan in the upcoming three games. We start playing better. We start creating chances. But we haven't won a game. So maybe two draws and a loss. Just an example. But you're seeing an improvement in the gameplay. Is that good enough for you? Or you're like, you rather have maybe a bad game in between, but I want those three points. You're a coach, man. Come on. Talk for me, me, for me, yeah, for me, if with my coach's head on, that's good enough because it, it's it's so difficult. Even though I've done it at such a minuscule level in comparison to being manager of Ajax, but it, you know, it is so difficult trying to win people over, have people gel together, get to know each other, language barriers, like all all these rumors of him apparently not speaking to the team or or, or not speaking to him in English, only speaking to a Dutch or, or whatever language he's do, using, and the new ones that are trying to learn Dutch. Don't know English, you know, it's it's all a bit of a mess if if, if those rumors are true. But um that's good enough for me because you can build on that. And it's football. You you could play really, 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 really well, take 25 shots and lose one nil. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So football, even though it's a results driven business, that that will be, you know, that'll be good enough for me. And unfortunately, it wouldn't be good for him because you know, you don't pick up the points, you go. 
you know. But for me, yeah, if, if if they're playing well and you actually see, like I I've seen the thing is is I've seen bits, but everyone seems to claim that they don't they don't haven't seen anything really of note. But I, I I've seen bits where the ball keeps going wide, and F- Forbes will get it and, and and he's trying to drive his man and there's wrench trying at least to overlap or offer some in, in inside run, you know. Um, so you can actually if you actually really look at it, you can see little bits even though they're not huge enough to you know change a game or, or win a game, which is a disappointing thing. Um, but yeah, you, I think it's good enough for me to build on. Papi, what about you? And uh, just just quickly, um, Roy is saying, Juan, Juan, stop. What did I do, man? I, I just want to know, why are you telling me to stop? You didn't like the questioning or... Let me know. I, just lost. I don't know. I don't know what he means. Should we stop the channel? Uh, stop what? Stop the show? I don't know. Tell stop me, man. Stein? Huh? Sorry? Stop, stop. Should we stop Stein? What's the plan? Uh, should we stop Stein? Exactly. I don't know what we should stop. Let me know. Uh, Papi, what about you? Um, what do you want to see? What What's really the minimum for you, these upcoming games? I want to see points against Twente. I will see progression in the way we play. I want to see a team that is hard to beat. And I think Feyenoord game will be key in the way we... Where if we play bad in that game and we get trashed, Stan is out. Um no matter what we do in the two games before that no matter what we do I so if you get if we get three points against twente three points against marseille but we get trashed from feyenoord it's done for you i think the pressure will be a lot on him i mean look six points would be a lot would be really like amazing so i, I don't think it would have any effect on his uh, managerial position but i think if he only gets like two points in the aided vz or one point i think it's going to be very hard to keep his uh, Puppy, would you rather uh, would you rather beat Feyenoord and drop the points in the other games, or win two and drop against Feyenoord? Of course, win two. Yeah, yeah, win two. I mean, look, the Feyenoord game is also important, but that's our direct competitor. So don't underestimate how important that is. That's not mm-hmm. only three points. That's six mm-hmm. points. Okay, clear. Anything? Anything you guys want to add to that? No, I just, I just think everyone just needs to, you know, keep the hat on for a little bit. Things don't change overnight, you know. You, you, you uh, have I just to agree, Luke. I think if you have a good coach, you should see the signs much earlier than what we're seeing with Stania. Or we, or we should conclude that the quality of the squad is terrible, and no other coach could ever make that better. But even with the amount of players that have gone and the amount of players that come in, if 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 you look at another team, uh, I'm not gonna, I can't think of another team but if you look at another team right now right everyone sells players but not many teams lose the amount of players that we did right okay I understand and then, that, but fine or last season also nine players coming in and they did much better than us so that's true. it is possible with a good coach that's and i mean all all season as well and we still managed to grasp the four the first six wins even under schreider so i mean true. The argument is, I mean, I understand I'm not going to try to sit here and mansplain to Luke how coaching is due to the fact that I think that's a losing battle at overall. <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to. But at the same time, I have to, you know, I have to agree with Papamento a little bit due to the fact that I do believe that another coach might have gotten better results from from that than we have seen so far. But at the same time, yeah, I do agree. We have to have some type of sen- uh, semblance of co- no, com- uh, calm and, you know, patience with the process. I mean, so, yeah, trust the process and all that. But, yeah, uh, it's, 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 a hard, it's a hard thing trying to find a middle way here because sometimes I just want to scream scream at him. But at the other time, sometimes, you know, you have to you have to understand the circumstances around it as well. So It's a double-edged sword, though, because, okay, I would I hire Stein? No. Yeah, as I, if I was Sven, I wouldn't hire him. You'd, you'd find someone that suits the philosophy. Bosch, for example, would have been good, but we won't talk about that because we've talked about it many times. You know, but a coach uh, that, you know, likes to play good, attractive football, da, 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 all, all that good stuff. But at the same time, you can't ignore the amount of plays lost. And you could say final had nine, but we're not final. You know, they've still got Anna Schlott, no? So we have a whole new manager, okay, and who's... Highest level was Sparta, in my opinion, getting him sixth best thing he's achieved. Fine. He deserved the opportunity to go to another club. Okay. Maybe not straight to Ajax. Maybe 
you know, it could have went to Twente and then and then did something and went up or you today and then and that. But he hasn't. He's on to Ajax, but he's lost so many players. He's on Im- under immense pressure, and he's obviously. I'm not defending him moaning in the in, in the press. You know, that's his. I don't agree with that. I didn't like him doing that. But if you look at things in terms of the squad and in terms of his credibility, I think he has enough to be able to earn some respect to be able to try and change change it. And 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 you can't deny the fact that we've lost so many players and had to buy a bunch of other new players who have come from different leagues as well. Most of them. Okay, so... So, okay, that situation, and that's why I'm not coming down on Stein like I would any other coach. But we are talking about Fortuna last game. We're not talking about Absolutely. a big game. We're talking about Fortuna. Absolutely. And we shouldn't be Fortuna, no problem. I, I completely agree. But you have there will always be a but with me, right? Yeah. You always have to be able to look at the silver line, and you have to, because otherwise... You know, how are you supposed to look forward? Look, I do understand. I do understand. And I agree fully. I mean, fully with you. The only thing is, for me personally, there are two things I want to add to this discussion. And then we can move on from this. And maybe you guys can react as well. Is Personally, the way I look at it is two, twofold. There is like this this um, this standard. There is a, this standard. And we want to be like here. Right? And if we're not there, okay, a couple of percentage below that. Is fine considering everything you're saying, considering Stan is new, considering the players, etc. But what we showed against Ludo Goretz in Amsterdam in the arena, and what we showed against Fortuna Sittard, that's like below any standards Absolutely. that I've seen. We didn't come yeah. I mean, we didn't like the expected goals. If you only look at the expected goals ratio, that was 0. 0.3 and lower. We were we, we, we didn't create chances, we didn't do anything. It was exactly. very just playing long balls would have given you more chances. Unadventurous football, no no patterns of play, nothing, nothing, completely nothing. And for me, that's regardless of everything you could throw as an excuse, which are good excuses in my opinion, I don't think that's acceptable. Even with the quality of player, even with Vine now and Wrench trying to cause no, overlaps, no, no, can't no. even make good decisions. There, you can't say that even with those you should beat the greatest. You, you can't with those kind of players. Look, we, we didn't. We didn't create anything, man. No, no, listen, I agree. Beat Ludogorets, fine. I understand. But then you need the players to be able to create the chances. Vine now and Wrench have no football you in know, brain, right? You know what's funny to me? Actually, when I was watching that um, that Dortmund friendly, uh, everybody was pissed at how Ajax played, but I saw an energized, very good Ajax. But that was a totally different Ajax with more youth players than what we saw against Fortuna. More link up play, they understood each other, they understood their position, and then a couple of games later, they don't know how to play football anymore. Uh, no, that is up to a coach to, to make that right, and maybe because of all the changes, but he didn't yeah, have so. to do all those changes. Look, that's the thing, so. yeah. No, no, listen, I, I think it's a culture thing. I think bringing all these players in, it, it, you have to then change the culture changes of the squad. You bring in all the young players, this, the culture they've, they've grown up with in, in, in the academies, it's going to come naturally to them, hence why you saw. Good performances when Voss played, or you know when Gotts plays, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're better even performances, and then, and then, and then you have to have players that come in that are new, that don't he know had the culture. Arson in the back with Hato against. Yeah, Jordan. I understand. Don't forget. I understand. All I'm great. saying is everyone needs to just calm down a bit in terms of, g- of course, in general, and and see how it plays out. That was the point. But you're not seeing me saying uh, out, out or um, we're not getting. No, I'm, I'm, not I'm not saying. I'm not. And I'm not trying to say that you're saying that at all. Not at all. Would you be calm as well if next week? Just, just your answer on this one, everyone. Would you be calm if we play Feyenoord next after the final game next week, and we'll be double digits behind them, like ten points or something? Because we're already we're already five points behind Twente, behind Feyenoord. No, not behind Feyenoord, behind PSV. I'm talking more about that. So if we would be trailing double digits against PSV or something, not, not because Feyenoord. one last one less game played or something like that. That's or- true. That's true, that's true. I mean, to be fair, in that regard, I mean, we have played one less than I've... Uh, at least, I said, I think P- PSV might have also had... No, I think we're maybe played as many games as... No, we. I think... I think No, no, wait a minute. I think the Twente, all, all the ones that play Europe, um, they had also that that weekend, they didn't play the game. So, might in the qualifying rounds. Might be true, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, okay, so would you be still calm about that, Luke, even though it's early stages? Because then we would have played five games. 
but yeah, we're like because, almost double because, digits trailing from Twente, let's say, or PSV. Yeah, because it's too early to to, to think anything. If if you look at other, okay, let's use the Premier League last year. It's a different different league, I understand. But last year, Arsenal were clear for so long, and then lost. Yeah, you did, you did. I listen. No, no, and mm. I understand it's Man City. No, I'm not, and I'm not trying to compare the squads, but you know. They just kept going and kept going. You just have to think about your own team and, and, and the club itself and your squad and do what you can until Stein's last day. And then if he goes, he goes. You know? Okay. All right. But, but um, it, what's, what's the point in worrying about, you know, okay, you could be concerned that you're, you know, or you can be like, oh, you know, I'm a bit annoyed that we're 10 points behind already. Da, 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 da. But you have to remember, we're still rebuilding. We're not in a position where PSV can add, you know, they're, they're trying to buy their way to anyway, remember? So, okay. All right, understood, understood. Um, let me go through the comments, guys, and then we move on to a couple of other subjects as well. And I will also, if there's any question or anything you guys want to react on the comments as well, please go ahead. Um, Christian is saying, if you go into the Conference League, I'll start meeting up with my friends Ben and Jerry again, and I just start losing quit. All right. Um, DNNY is making a, a good point, actually. So, Missing Thought as a sporting director, when he was appointed at Stuttgart, um, made a mistake in the appointment of uh, the first coach that he, that he did. Or another first coach, I think. I don't know. But he made a mistake in appointing a coach and also sat him before Christmas and appointed another coach, which was better, um, for a longer tenure, and he did well. That's, That's a green move. Sacking him before Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wait, wait, we did that as well. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I forget I said anything. Uh, all right. Uh, Flores. Uh, Flores is uh, saying a massive mistake to hire a Dutch coach who is outspoken and has a preference for Dutch players. Uh, and then we give him a bunch of internationals. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't really understand. I mean, I understand the language barrier type of thing, and I understand the culture, you know, culture plays into it as well. But I don't really buy into the argument, the fact that the Dutch coach can't handle international players. I'm not entirely sure I'm comfortable with that type of... Because that's sure. that's an argument usually peddled in the uh, uh, in the telegraphs and stuff, which I've read, and I'm not really sure I'm, I'm all on board with that. Uh, I think uh, in Sparta or other teams, he played also with uh, different international players. I just think the problem now is that everything is coming in one shot. Everything is changing and he has to set everything. That's the biggest problem for him at the moment. Agreed. All right. Uh, Luke, listen. Um, Remy is saying you're making a lot of sense, man. Good job, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> listen, just my opinion, man. Just my opinion. Yeah. Um, Team Parker, I want us to see us play like we actually have a midfield. Fortuna played through our midfield like a hot knife through warm boil. <laughs> yeah, all right. The, yeah. Um, Contrarius is saying, um, Miss Lutatistan is just a match made in hell. A technical director who scouts players internationally and from lower leagues and a manager that openly says uh, he prefers Dutch players is asking for trouble. Okay. Um, there's always been that at Ajax that they want some kind of culture, Dutch culture within the team. I mean, but it's don't not we that have weird that? to have? Don't we have that right now? Don't we have that in Hato? We had, we had that. Not only Hato. No, we have. Look at how many Dutch players we have. Yeah, I mean, as Ben yeah, yeah, yeah. Rens, Horter. Yeah, exactly. You might you may not like Range, but we can't really discredit him. He has played. In and I'm not talking even about all the youngsters. You know, we didn't even touch upon them that might get chances every now and then. But okay. Um, Kans is saying um, exactly, Papimento. Look what Slot does every year with new average players. I don't um, understand this, this 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 comparison to Feyenoord all, all the time. I get their rivals. No, it's not a comparison with. No, no, wait. It's not a comparison with. No, it's, not com it's a comparison with what a coach can do. With, with players that are not great. I mean, not great with limited resources. Let me put it this way. But he has time with them, right? It just it just looked like... I always see the final and it always looks like a, um, a comparison or like a, 
I think what do you mean, like what do you mean we have time? What do you no, mean the comparison. Time? I'm sorry, Juan, but the comparison is this: Look, we lost a lot of players last season. They've lost a lot of players last season. We they they were managed. They they managed to solve those uh, players to the positions, and we didn't. And you saw what happened in that season. But Slot did get a rhythm in that team very early. And three coaches now at Ajax haven't been able to to show yeah. a different level. I mean, to be fair, we didn't have a director of football last season. So those buys are really, you know, just a toss in the air, really. So I think this I think season... I think this season might be a little bit more comparable, but yeah, I do completely agree the fact that you know that a better coach might actually be able to make it, you know, at least make an imprint to begin with. But then I'm again, I'm not saying uh, Stein is not a good coach. I'm just saying I expected a little bit more for yeah. till now, but I'm still giving him the chance to to prove me wrong. Absolutely, I haven't Absolutely. given up on Stein yet. Absolutely not. All right, guys, I need to move on a little bit. Uh, also, in terms of time, um, Remy is saying. Um, who here actually believes the assumption of the media saying <clears throat> that Stan and Misenthal haven't spoken, considering the source also? I don't think I don't think anyone thinks that they haven't spoken. They talk to each other. However, that was disproven though. That was a lot. That was disproven because they said they haven't spoken. You know, they set a deadline. Uh, it said they haven't spoken since this and this, and then it's like, yeah, but that was before the Fortuna game, and then there's picture of them talking. So. That's yeah no that's just tabloid that's just tabloid uh, like yeah. draw, trying to stir things up. Contarius is saying, "I laughed when Kabir recommended Solskjaer a few months ago. Now I wish we had a manager like him." All right, <laughs> that's pretty cool to, to say something like that. Okay. <clears throat> um, let me see. Um, we have a comment from Sven Surf Tsunami. Fact. Stan said to be ready for competition before Excelsior, way before. Basically, only Kudus left, and now he's not ready. That's yeah, a huge point. quality, though. What you're like, it, it is, but yeah, he, I mean, he carried us for the, for those games mostly. With his, I mean, without his goals, we basically maybe wouldn't have been in the Europa League. So, yeah, but at the same time, that shouldn't be the case, really. Yeah. So. <sighs> All right, guys. Um, quickly. Um, what about because I saw some comments also early in the chat, early in the video about Vincent Bocharda, who uh, actually uh, just quitted his uh, new adventure in Turkey. Together, he was working with Clever. So a lot of people are saying to get him back to Ajax. Where do you guys stand? Would you guys see? Would you guys like to see him back at Ajax? The pro isn't the problem there that basically the relationship with the cl club or the board has been really impermeable, impermeable, damaged. By I don't, know. I don't know. I think his biggest problem was from the start. That's what he said one time. And from the the start, he left. Okay, that's the truth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I would get him back, Juan, to be honest. If I like IX DNA yeah. coming back. Uh, he could uh, help us uh, get the level we want much faster, I think, if, if he focuses on the defense. I've heard a lot of good things about him when he was still with Ten Hag, I think, uh, back in the day. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind it at all. To be honest. Defensively, apparently, he is a very, has a really good idea of things, and I think that might be required. Yeah. Uh, guys, question um, that uh, we had to touch upon quickly. It was actually also more a question for Luke, um, but I want you guys to to also react to that. Uh, the earlier question is about Berghuis. Where would you place him? Would you consider him as a right winger, or would you place him somewhere else? Maybe would you? Let him start even uh, against Twente on Sunday. So, quick answer on this one, guys, because we have to touch upon other topics as well. Luke, go ahead. Let's go first. Okay, cool. Um, I play him on the right. And I think that him coming inside means that overlap color. Yeah. And would you pick a wrench or would you pick Guy? Guy. Okay. Uh, Pelle? I would probably have to say the same on the right as well, start because we need that uh, experience in the starting 11. Okay. Puppy? As a 10 for me. Who would you because play right I... wing then? Um, or Mickey Touts or Forbes. Okay, and you would keep Berghain on the left. Absolutely. So really quickly then, so where would you play Akpom? Would you not would you bench him or start him up top? I would not start him yet because he was injured before he came. I don't know his level yet. I think he's still getting accustomed to Ajax. He did get some minutes in the Fortuna game. 
and he did play well, so maybe he can come off uh, off the bench. But uh, I think Berg has has been there with Ajax. He has the maturity. He's the veteran. I think a number ten position is critical, critical for Ajax's way of play. So I want an experienced player there, and he would make the most sense. Sure, fair enough. Um, quickly coming back to Bohard, the Vagabond is uh, saying Bohard had some private issues relating to a stalking <clears throat> a, a female female uh, person. I don't know. That was a personal thing, right? Or was it uh, work related? I'm not sure whether it was work related, but still. And he heard on the Twitter space that I don't want him anymore. Doesn't want to take the risk to hire him. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, uh, guys, um, so we, we talked a lot about Stan in upcoming games, so um, we hope for the best. Um, I, didn't, I didn't bring up this comment, which was actually very funny, and I have to let people know about this. I don't know if people think about this the same way, but we're not licensed to be, you know, uh, to be like this, but I hope you guys still enjoy the live shows every week. Uh, thank you, Nickname, for this comment. Uh, it made us laugh a lot. Um, Guys, I want to talk to quickly on a couple of things. First of all, um, we didn't touch upon it last week because uh, we had a full um, session and we had to talk about other stuff. But quickly on uh, Heitinga, who went to West Ham uh, to become an assistant coach. Uh, are you guys happy with that? I'm happy Good for him. him. Good for him. Good for kudos. I expected, I did, expected a different route, but I'm still happy for mm. him. It's a big club. I believe, I believe it was only until the end of the season. So it's only for this season. So maybe he's building up more experience and eventually he will want to lead and coach. It's a door, the... isn't it? It's a step in the door, isn't it? So Exactly. Yeah. And he it's learns not... a lot from an experienced coach like that because oh, he's been in the game for a long time. Of play might not really fit, but at the same time, you know, good, you know, with the experience. So yeah, absolutely. One of the biggest leagues as well. So yeah, good for him. Good for kudos. Fun for all that is. Yeah. Uh, the next topic, uh, people already knowing, I didn't share the list with anyone, but people already know what they're going to ask you guys. So, uh, El Ghazi, guys. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, El Ghazi, his contract has been uh, uh, mutually terminated with PSV. Uh, he's now training at the Young, uh, at young Ajax, at the, at the, at the Tukums. Um, there's a debate going on yesterday, uh, a whole debate on Twitter or X about whether we should take El Ghazi, especially because the right wing position seems a little bit edgy. We don't really have a particular right wing position or right wing player. Um, so my question to you guys, and people are asking, you know, like even Sebastian here is jumping up and down saying, bring Anwar home. What do you guys think? Should we do it? Should we not do it? And I also want to know why. Uh, let me give it to Pavimento first. If it's really a problem, that right wing, I would do it. But I know from experience that El Ghazi, his best El Ghazi at Ajax was left wing, no? When he when Boss let him go back then, he was playing left wing. And I, I haven't seen him play right wing. So why is everybody now saying because you he likes to come in and shoot? Right? I haven't seen him play right wing at Ajax, you mean? Because he played, I think, at yeah, yeah, at Ajax. he played right wing positions, I believe. And also at PSV, sometimes he played also on the right wing. Pretty much, okay. yeah. Okay. I just remember from the Ajax time that he likes to cut inside, shoot, kind of like Bergwijn does. So I'm not really sure about his crosses, his uh, his capabilities with his other leg, let's say. Um, but if the right wing is a huge problem, get him. If we are convinced and have the confidence in Mickey Tauze and Forbes, don't bring him. Okay. Uh, Luke, where do you stand on this one? Don't bring him. I understand the whole nostalgia behind it. Uh, I always like, like Papi said earlier about, you know, bringing people with Ajax DNA or, you know, back to the club and things like that. But there's no point in signing Forbes and um, Mika to then put him right wing as well. It doesn't make sense for me. And then, you know, you, you want Forbes to progress, play him, you know, play players that have been there before. That especially when they get into that stage of their career, in my opinion. Yeah. And also, I think Stan said, you right, he wants to, even though Forbes is better on the left side, he, they, they have a clear plan to make him also work or be able to play on the right wing side. He also considered Hotz, which is also a, a youngster, as a right wing option, even though he's also much more left oriented. But if we get El Ghazi, it might hinder their also yeah. development, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and, and the elephant in the room, Juan. And the elephant in the room, because if he goes to a 3 5 2 formation, 
you don't even have a need a right wing anymore. And so is Anwar so is Anwar the elephant here? No. The, oh. the 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 change information is the elephant in the room. Ah, what okay. I have to say, and and that would change the position of that right wing if we need one. That's true. That's true. Um, Pele, I, I, my spontaneous thought is no, I wouldn't bring him in either because I don't think that's. I mean, yeah, we don't have a naturally trained right winger, but at the same time, I don't know why we would have let Concheco go, for example, if we thought that if it's going to be that much of a problem and if we didn't have any type of plan for the right position so no i think it's we, going we to be didn't hard. let chico go Pele. he wanted to leave that's uh, i mean that's true i mean that's true as well but we didn't really give him any time to play so i mean can't, can't really say i blame him um but no i, I honestly I, I probably wouldn't but at the same time yeah if 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 you wanted to take him in as a super sub great absolutely but i don't think that's the thing we require right now so no i i personally wouldn't not even for nostalgia okay so everybody's saying uh you guys are saying basically no don't do it um all right clear then i have another topic uh the last topic actually of today which we didn't touch upon earlier something very interesting happened as well during the transfer window we talked all about the players that left we talked all about the players that uh, we uh, we signed but there is also one player that saw his competition increase on his position, specifically on the left back position. Um, Salah Dean was basically coming back from Twente. Uh, he was on loan, fighting for his spot. He really wants to succeed at Ajax. He had an interview in which he said, um, I had interest from various clubs in Europe, but also in Qatar um, and outside, etc. But I just want to give it everything I have. I just want to show that at the end, if, if I succeed or not, I can tell myself I've done everything I could. And uh, basically, that's why he decided and he told Stein about this as well, that I want to I make it here. I want to do everything I can. And he's even open to the fact that if he doesn't work as a left back, he's open to play any other position uh, that might be more suitable for him and Ajax as well. Quickly on that, do you guys think, uh, apart from, of course, the mentality thing, I think that's good. But do you, do you guys think it's a wise decision from him? Uh, to do it. He's still young, of course. But he also said he's from the youth. He's from Ajax. He's from Amsterdam. He knows how things work. Um, and he really wants to make it work. So what do you guys think about that? Just quick thoughts on that. And people can comment as well and let me know what they think. Papi, what do you think? Oh, man, look at my smile. I love that. Uh, actually, I, I love uh, Salah Haddin even more now. Um Look, there are problems with his game, but I still think he can be an asset. He has Sosa now next to him. He has Avila. I think he can learn from these players. He needs to hit the gym, get some physical attributes going so he doesn't get like pushed around when he tries to defend. But his asset is his passing. He's a great passer, actually, and he has great like uh, crosses. So... For me, if he elevates his physical side, his uh, you know his running, his physique, that that side of his game, I think he can still be a great asset in the long term for Ajax. And having that kind of mentality is not wrong. And I love that kind of mentality. It shows that he loves Ajax and he's willing to do everything for it. Yeah, Luke, what do you think? I, feel, I fully agree with Papi. Fully agree. The mentality is fantastic. I think that you know he has this dynamism about him where he wants to do everything positive. He doesn't want to be negative. He doesn't want to try and just play the easy pass. He wants to do everything he can to help the team. And the fact that he's come out and he said, look, I want to stay out fight. He could take an easy way out and gone elsewhere, but he hasn't. Mm -hmm. And and those are the players you want around the club that are going to fight for the badge and not just for themselves, you know? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's, yeah, I know exactly because I agree with that as well. Because what I first of all, what I saw from him when he was playing for Twente, for example, I, I actually do believe that he was showing some qualities in which we required for the... We, which made me look forward to getting him back. So with that type of mentality that he wants to stay and fight for his spot, I do ex definitely believe that he has made the right, cho uh, right choice to stay. If that means he's going to get some ga game time, not doesn't necessarily mean so due to the fact that we've heard from Stein that he wasn't really impressed with what was available on the left side. That being said, there is no guarantee that that's the only spot in which he's going to be able to show his attribute. So I... I find it commendable, and I do think that the club should act absolutely, you know, try to promote that type of, you know, altruistic type of com camaraderie that you want to almost, you know, fight and die for your teammates and f fight for the club. He's a big fan of the club, 
and that's exactly what you need in that situation. So yeah, I definitely think it's the right choice. Let's just hope that for both him and for us that it you know it pays out. Um, with the risk of happen? with the risk of having another uh, comment from Roy telling me to stop, I still have to say this, but or ask this question. You know, in the beginning, a couple of years ago, we also had a lot of questions, question marks, basically, and doubts about Mazzari. You remember? He was a midfielder, but and he wanted to play as a midfielder, but, you know, he was put at the right back position, but he also lacks positioning as a defender. And then, you know, after a couple of games, a season, etc., he became better and he became one of the best right backs we've had. Can you guys see a, cert, a similar route? For Salah Din, if we're patient enough. Absolutely. Why yeah. not? I think no one pointed it out in the group yes. chat also, the fact that he can be see him as a six. So that might in the long term be you know a viable solution as well, as at least with the passing. But I don't you know, his, uh, his defensive attributes might need to, you know, obviously something that yeah. he need to, you know, ha ha hammer out in that regard. He could he could do the uh the you know the deeper eight, I think. For, for his his way of passing, but he may still cut it at left back. He might go to the gym and then he comes out, or he might, you know, go become more aggressive defensively, or you know, Avila and Sosa, or even you know, um, Sutalo, if he ever plays next to him at any point, might be able to teach him better defensively. And he might still become, become a really good left back. We don't know. I hope he does, though, because the attitude is really, really good. Technically, he's a good player, you know, mm. technically, yeah. he's a good player, yeah, he brings something. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's the other aspects. Yeah, it's it's the other aspects, as I said, the physical part of things. And uh, if, uh, but I think that's that that's easily worked on. I think that's the most important thing um, it, to have is that ball control, that passing. Those are key elements, and around that you can work on other things. That that's yeah. football intelligence, football IQ. You have to yeah, have exactly. That. It's not something you, guys, you guys think he he has football IQ. Yeah, understanding oh. of the game, isn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, that's it, guys. I think that's the end of the show, even though Ziggy is saying, of course, guys, I don't think he's comparable to Mazari. He had a lot more than Salah Din on the back position. Yeah, but no, I, I don't, think... you feel, don't you feel, Ziggy, that we're saying that in hindsight? Because I remember those days vividly that we were questioning Mazari. And people were not only questioning, he himself. wasn't. He wasn't good in defense. Uh, he was True. he was actually very vulnerable in uh, in the back. Correct. Um, Correct. And he he wasn't uh, as dominant in on the attacking side either. Like it took a while. It took him like three seasons, and he was constantly injured as well. Not three seasons, but yeah, a little bit less. Yeah, and he was injured a lot of times. Correct. That's true. Uh, Roy is saying <laughs> <laughs> no. No one last question. The only thing I would yeah, say there is there is a twenty prediction. Okay, we will. Okay, go ahead. Twenty prediction, everyone. So twenty Ajax, uh, Papi. Because you asked the question, you can go first. I think it's going to be a zero one. So we're we're snatching that three points one zero. It's going to be scrappy. It's going to be scrappy. And the whole festa. Okay, um, go ahead, Luke. Uh, I think two one two Ajax. Wow, man, you guys are negative the whole show, and then when it comes to the prediction, you guys are all giving wins to Ajax. That's funny. funny. <laughs> I'm positive as anything. I, I, I'm a bit negative. I'm, man. Tell it. Go ahead. I'm gonna bring some northern optimism for this one. Two zero. I've seen Twente play when they play Hammarby. We we got this. It should be fine. Even us, we should we should get this. So zero two. Yeah, uh, so okay. it's, yeah, we win two two series. Two zero. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are saying. Uh, let's see, zero two one one. Ooh, Twente three one. Okay. Ajax 3-1. Uh, okay, a draw. I'm yeah, guys, draw. don't forget to put this in the comment, not the live chat. Don't forget to put those predictions. Yeah, the so let me let me just say what we said at the, at the start of the session, just for people to remind themselves after we click on the end of the stream. This video will be published. Please like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet to our channel. And then, first question, how many points will we get against Twente? Against... Marseille and against Feyenoord combined. So maximum, of course, nine points. How many goals will we score in those three games as well? Let us know. We want to know those two. And um, I hope you guys are a little bit positive about that. But either way, uh, good luck. And um, good luck to us. Good luck to Ajax. Uh, we'll see you guys on Sunday for the post-match talk. Mm -hmm. Pele, it's been, uh, 
It's been great, man. Thank you for being here. Puppy, Luke, boys. cheers, Always everyone. Good. Have a nice evening. Take care. You guys, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.